BLHeli32.8 is here, and that means it's time for me to make another video about BLHeli, which is kind of a big deal because a while back, I made a video, BLHeli32, 100% explained, where I sat down with Ryan Harrell, one of the smartest guys I know relating to motors and ESCs, and we went through every single BLHeli32 option, explained what it is, how it works, and even made recommendations about how to tune it. I'll put a link to that down in the video description if you want to check it out. But now, BLA32.8 uh, has brought something new to the table. And that means it's time to update this video. And while we're at it, hey, if you want to get on BLA32.8 and maybe you don't know how to flash it or where to download it or just need to be brought up to speed, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The cool feature that BLA32.8 has brought to the table that I think everybody needs to know about is variable PWM frequency. You're not freaking out. Well, some of you are. Variable PWM frequency is a big deal. You see, when the ESC drives the motor, it doesn't just put a certain like DC voltage across the motor. That's not how brushless motors work. It drives the motors by sending a pulse width modulated signal. And the frequency of that signal has a big effect on how the motor handles. A higher PWM frequency gives smoother motors, but at the expense of torque and braking strength. A lower PWM frequency has more torque, especially at low RPMs, and more braking strength, but it's not as smooth. You can get mid-throttle oscillations and other problems. And so until now, pilots have had to make a tough decision. Either have stability at low throttle, that's basically what low PWM frequency gives you, stability at low throttle and rapid motor response, or have smooth motors, and, and you couldn't have both. Variable PWM frequency promises to give you both of those things. What, what variable PWM frequency does in BLH32 is when the throttle is low, it uses a low PWM frequency to give you torque and stability when the motors aren't spinning very fast. And as the throttle goes up, it ramps up the PWM frequency so that as you're at mid throttle and high throttle, you get the smoothness of the high. It's basically supposed to be the best of both worlds. So let's dive in. Let's download BL Heli. Let's, I've got a quadcopter here and I'm going to update it to BL Heli 32.8 and then we'll dive in. We'll take a look at the options and I'll give you just my general recommendations for how I set up an ESC today. Now I'm going to start by going to the BL Heli 32 GitHub page. And the reason I do that is, this is linked in the video description, by the way. The reason I do that is, is it always has the most up-to-date link for BL Heli Suite 32. And BL Heli Suite 32 is the app that you're going to use to flash and configure BL Heli, uh, BL Heli 32 ESCs. Really important distinction here. If you have BL Heli S ESCs, you may know that there's a bunch of other apps out there that you can use to configure them. There's JESC, there's Blue J Configurator, there's BL Heli Configurator. And yes, there's a version of BL Heli Suite for BL Heli S ESCs. That's because BL Heli S was open source and, and so there's all this other stuff going on with it. If you're running BL Heli 32 ESCs, it is closed source and there are no third party programs that you can use to configure them. You have to use this one. By the way, if you try to use the BLHeli 32 configurator and it like won't read your ESCs, they, they might be BLHeli SESC. That, that won't work either. Now you can see here that there are two links to BLHeli Suite 32. One is this Google Drive and one is this Mediafire link. I prefer the Google Drive link. And in fact, if we go here, I have actually starred this or add to my favorites or add shortcut to drive. You can actually add this to your, your own Google Drive and then you, you'll, it'll just show up there. You won't have to actually go to the GitHub page. We'll just do add to starred. And then if I go to starred, woo, here they are, starred. There's my BL Heli Suite. And you can always download the latest version there. Um, by the way, notice that this, is, this here is regular BL Heli Suite for BL Heli S ESCs. These are BL Heli Suite 32 for BL Heli 32 ESCs. And I don't have Linux and I don't have Mac OS. So the one I'm going to download is this one, BL Heli Suite 32 32A01.zip. That's for Windows. Now, BL Heli Suite doesn't have any Windows configurator or anything like that. You just open the zip file and you put it somewhere on your hard drive. Now, I've got a folder 
on my OneDrive uh, called RC Utilities. And in there, I've got a folder called Bill Heli Suite 32. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the old version out and copy the new version in. So I'm just going to select all by hitting Control A. And actually, in the music folder, I have uh, my startup. I, I like you can have startup music on BLA32, and I have a particular startup music that I like to use, and I save it there in that music folder. So actually, I'm going to Control A to select all, and then Control Click to deselect the music folder, and then I'm going to delete. I'm just going to hit the delete key and delete it all. Then I'm going to come down here and open up the zip file. And I got the zip file here, and I'm just going to click and drag to select all of those things. I'm going to drag them out of that folder over to my BL Heli Suite folder, and I'll take them out, unzip them, and boom, that's how you install BL Heli Suite 32. Let's go ahead and run it. The next thing you're going to do in order to make sure everything works correctly is select BL Heli 32 interface and make sure that beta flight slash clean flight interface M is selected. Uh, there are a couple other ways to connect to a BL Heli ESC, but that is the one that basically everybody watching this video is going to use. Then we're going to plug the flight controller into USB, and we're going to take a battery, and we're going to plug a battery in because the ESC has to be powered up in order for this to work. Uh, and you also can't have anything else running in the background that would be using your COM port. So if you got Betaflight Configurator open or anything like that, close them. That'll get in the way of doing what we need to do. We're going to go down to the ports and we're going to select the serial port that is associated with the flight controller. Basically, it's the serial port that appeared when you plugged in the flight controller. If you're not sure which one it is, unplug the flight controller and you'll see it disappear from the list. So we're going to pick that one and we're going to hit connect. And once we're connected, we're going to hit read setup. And at that point, you should see the configuration settings for all of your ESCs. If you don't, something has gone wrong and you may need to do some troubleshooting before we continue. Now, I'm just going to go to the ESC overview tab and make a note. Any changes from the default configuration are going to be bolded here. And in fact, I could even screen grab that and save it for later so that I can make sure to preserve my settings. The number one setting I want to preserve is the motor reverse setting so that after I update, my motors will be spinning the right direction. It looks like that's the only things I've changed is motor number four is reversed and I've got the PWM frequency set to 48K on all of these, but that's all going to change. The next thing I'm going to do is go over to the ESC flash tab and this is where we will flash the ESCs. We're going to make sure that all of the ESCs are highlighted, that are checked, and we're going to pull down here and we are going to look for 32.8 is not there. Why is 32.8 not here? Does the CSC like not support 32.8 for some reason? All right, let's try another one. Didn't, didn't expect that to happen. I actually have heard this from some other people saying that I tried to update to 32.8 and it didn't show up for my ESC. This is a Hobbywing ESC. Uh, and I thought, well, oh yeah, it's probably just user error. But clearly I was wrong, because it can't be user error this time. Oh, hell yeah. it's not a hobby wing. So now we are going to go to the ESC flashing tab. We're going to make sure all four of these are checked. We're going to select 32.8 here. We will enable keep settings, and that should mean we don't have to reconfigure the ESCs from scratch uh, when we go forward and flash selected ESC. That'll take a minute, but it'll flash all four of the ESCs. Make sure your battery's charged up before you do this. Because if the battery dies in the middle of a flash and the flash fails, it's not good. Alrighty, now that the ESC is flashed, we are going to go back to ESC setup. And we'll take a look at the new options we have. And the major new option is that PWM frequency has been changed to PWM frequency low and PWM frequency high. And if you want to disable dynamic PWM frequency, you just set them to the same value, and then that's the only PWM frequency it will use. But what I'm going to recommend you do, if only just to try out this new feature and see how it works, is change PWM frequency low as low as it will go for your particular ESC. And in my case, that's 48 kilohertz. And PWM frequency high as high as it will go for your particular ESC. In my case, that's 96 kilohertz. Um, I don't see any way that this could cause catastrophic problems like smoked motors or flyaways. But just in case, 
be safe when you first do a test hover. Don't just go bonkers on your first flight. Check for hot motors, check for desyncs or any other such problems. But people have been flying with 48K, 96K for a long time. And generally it can affect performance, but it doesn't cause any catastrophic problems. One thing to keep in mind if you're using dynamic PWM frequency is if you have customized your PID tune to try to fix certain problems like low throttle instability, if you chop the throttle and the quad kind of wobbles, or if you raise and lower the throttle rapidly and the nose of the quad moves up and down, if you've tuned around that by messing with your eye gain or by changing eye term relax threshold or by using thrust linear especially, you're going to want to turn those things off. You're going to want to go back to more of a default tune because the dynamic PWM frequency may fix that problem innately and you don't have to like screw with thrust linear, which can cause other problems while fixing the problem of low throttle instability. So you may, maybe some retuning, but the net result hopefully should be better because instead of fixing the problem in the, in the PID loop, you're fixing the problem at a lower level and that's usually a good thing. If you've got a tiny whoop and you've been using 48K or 96K PWM frequency to get increased flight times and more battery efficiency, that may be a case where you don't want to use the variable PWM frequency. I haven't tested this yet just because it's going into spring and I'm not flying a lot of tiny whoops because the weather's really nice. But it seems like in that case, you would want the PWM frequency to be as high as possible, as much as possible, so you get the maximum efficiency gains. But again, that's something that you could certainly test for yourself. Well, as long as we're here, let's talk about other settings that I change when I'm setting up my ESCs. And most of this stuff, I leave at default, but there are a couple things I tweak. Um, motor timing. In the past, I've set motor timing to auto uh, because I thought that for freestyle quads, it gave smoother response. More and more people these days are setting motor timing to 23 degrees. And that's something that racers always used to do uh, because it gives a little more power and a little more protection against desyncs. Desyncs really shouldn't be a problem on most typical setups, but I have switched to 23 degree motor timing even on my freestyle rigs. I'm not sure that I could pick the difference out in a back-to-back -back flight test, but bench tests at least have shown a little more power and a little more consistency out of the 23 degree timing. So for most of my setups, that's what I do. Um, if you're not sure, leave it at auto, but 23 degrees is a good place to be. Uh, the next thing to do is take out the stuff from your PID controller that specifically is designed to deal with low throttle instability and high throttle smoothness. Maybe even go back to default PIDs and retune from scratch, but see how, if, what effect this has had on your handling. And then come back here and let me know down in the comments because this is a new feature. And some people feel like it's working really well. And I've had a couple other reports from people who said, I don't know why, but it made my motor super hot and I didn't like it. I have no idea how that would happen, but let me know. In addition, there is a new ESC firmware for BLH32 ESCs called AM32. It is an open source firmware that this guy, Pete Smits, just made. It took him like two years and he just did it because he, I don't know, he's weird, he's crazy. But AM32 is out there and they have a different way of doing dynamic PWM frequency. A little different than how BLH32 does it. I'll put a link to the interview with Pete down in the video description. Had a cool interview with him talking about his firmware and uh, you may be interested in that. Thanks for watching and happy flying. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Use my affiliate links. Or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Go, 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 go. Subscribe to my daddy.